Hiya, um, alright, this is basically a video just about basics really. Um, I don't know if you've got birds or not or whether you're thinking about getting birds. Uh, I really want to cover things that you're going to need if you haven't got any birds and you want to get something. So really you're going to need to know where to start. First of all you're going to need a cage. Um, for a finch, as I said in the first video, you don't, you're not looking for the height, you're looking for the width, so or the length, however you want to put it. Uh, really, ideally, if you're going to, if they're going to be housed in there for their life, you know, for the whole of their lives, etc., you're going to need at least, I'd say about three foot, about three foot in length. I mean, people do use smaller ones, but realistically, they're too small. They need about three, uh, about three foot or more. The bigger, the better, really. Um, and you're going to need some kind of uh, substrate for the floor. Um, some people use newspaper. I use wood, uh, pine wood chippings. Um, never ever use sand. Anything sand or uh, grit. Don't use anything like that because it's glass. And when they nibble it, they digest it, and it causes lots of problems inside because they can't actually they can't digest the glass really, and it also ruins their um, their, their gizzards. So. It's just something to bear in mind. Um, some of the basic things you're going to need to get started. I've put some things by. This is basically oyster, crushed oyster shell. You're going to need that for calcium um, pretty much daily. Uh, given plenty of that, you're going to need one of these, which are very, very cheap. You can find these on the uh, coastlines as well. So just take them home, boil them, um, soak them overnight first, boil them, and then I always boil them for about 20 minutes and then leave them in the sun to dry and they're pretty much good enough to they're good enough to give to your birds um, you're going to need one of those uh, there is a tip on these um, when you use these for your for your birds you don't have to put the whole thing in there because they're, they're not really gonna it takes ages for them to get through it depending on how many birds you've got if you've only got one or well, a couple of birds in there you can you can probably break these into quarters and then just put a little bit and wedge it between the bars if you wanted to above the perch so they can't poop on it. And then, as they as it's worn down, take it out and put the next piece in there. They really don't need all of it. It just takes up so much room and it ends up getting all poops over and it just take. They do take quite a while to go through them if you've only got a couple. So you're definitely going to need those. Um, another thing I wanted to say you're going to need as well is this is liquid calcium. I'm not going to go into brands because I'm not into free advertising, but I will say that you'll need liquid calcium. This is um, not a treatment, it's a supplement. You put it in, you, you, really, you add it to their drinking water seven, a couple of times a week, really. It, it depends what, what season it is, whether it's breeding season, um, whether it's just before, just after breeding season. Um, or if they're uh, lacking in calcium. Another thing I haven't got actually is um, I wanted to put by with some, well I can tell you anyway, eggshells. You, if you're going to use like your chicken eggs, you cook your eggs up or whether you're giving them to the birds, um, you get your eggshell, boil them. Boil them for a good six or ten minutes or something like that. All your shells, put them in, boil them for about ten minutes and lay them out to dry. And they're pretty much sterilised. You can crush them down when they're nice and dry or you can just put them in whole, put them in the aviary and the, the birds will just devour it. It's good for their calcium. Um, it's one of the best forms of calcium, I think, because uh, their bodies actually take it all up. Um, not like this and these. Although that is pretty much 100% calcium, their body don't actually take it all up. So it's very hard for, them, for their body. It's just the way their anatomy is. It's just hard for them to take it all up. Um, you're going to need some charcoal as well. Um, it's just carbon grains, really. I mean, you don't need to add a lot. Just a couple of grains, just a couple of grains a day for the birds in there. But I always mix it with, put some when I put that in, and then I scrape a little bit of um, cuttlefish. And I scrape a little bit of any. I, I have what you call a, I call it a dry dish. Um, it's got uh, charcoal in there. It's got. Um, crushed oyster shell, crushed egg shell, sometimes I get a little mineral block and I might scrape a little bit of that in so it's all dusty and it's got a bit of a mixture of everything because the birds like nibbling on things like that. 
Of course, another thing you're going to need, you're going to need some kind of a dish to put your food in. This one just clips onto the bars and on the inside. and It's a very small one and it, it's probably not really big enough for two birds. I don't think it is. My birds tend to eat quite a lot. So, I mean, these come in various shapes and sizes. They don't all clip onto the bars. You can get little dishes. Um, I don't like them too deep because they, they tend up they tend to eat all the food on top and not dig down further enough and then you end up throwing all the food away including the stuff at the bottom whereas you've got on top you've got loads of shell so it's, it's, it's good really to get one that's not so not so deep but wider so they can stand on there and they can get to all of it because the last thing you want to be doing is throwing away expensive food um, of course you're going to want a drinker some people use these to put food in as well, but I, I don't. I, I think it's they waste a lot of food that way. They pick it, pick it up. Sometimes they drop it and it falls over the side and never to be seen again when you get hoovered up. But just these don't cost nothing really. They're quite cheap. You can get these ten to a dozen really. So um, these are handy to have. Nail clippers and a pair of tweezers. Nail clippers are handy for doing their toenails. Because they, on some birds they, some birds they grow quite fast, faster than what they can actually grind them down. Um, same with their beaks as well. You may get a disformed beak, or when it's grown over on the top, or grown over on the bottom, etc. And you can just nick it off on the end. It's just keep them in trim, really. Um, and the, these are handy for pretty much anything, really. In case you need to pull a feather out, or pull something out, or you know, if it's got something stuck in its mouth. Um, they're just handy things to have really, so always have your little tools ready just in case. I think I mentioned this in the first video. Um, I like to have a, a decent sized magnifying glass, and as I said, this one's got lights on it, so in case it's like dark. And if there's something wrong with the bird, or if, even if I'm just doing like a routine check, I like to sometimes I like to hold the bird, hold the wing out, and then I would like to just. Uh, just have a good check really and I like to check around the eyes, nose, uh, the ears, the beak, everything really. Just make sure everything's clear and just to make sure there's no dried mucus or you know anything like that. And I like to check the vent area just to check the overall condition of the bird really. Um, also there's a little, I think again I mentioned, is a little powerful light. It's always handy, you never know, you may need to look in the nest, um, one that you can't get to very well and you can use like a I don't have one at hand, but I do have one in the front room. Uh, a small mirror, you could use something like a dentist mirror, and then what you do is you put the mirror inside the nest, and then you use the light to reflect the light, and you can see exactly what's going on inside the nest without having to use your fingers, without touching anything and breaking eggs and hurting chicks, etc. Or if you're worried about scent, not that scent makes any difference whatsoever because it doesn't, it's, that's fake law. Um, it's always handy to have that. And it's also handy to have this as well if you're doing. If you're cleaning, if you're cleaning your aviary out or your cage, and you use this to go around all the cracks and crannies, they're all in, all in the bottom, and you can check for for signs of mites or anything that shouldn't be there, and uh, with the light on there as well, it's it's quite a little valuable aid. So yeah, and there's more handy things about. They don't cost a lot. They're very they're not, they're not expensive really. They're just something you'd probably be better off having. It's better about it really than not having. So, um, other things you're going to need, you're going to need vitamin drops. Birds going to need vitamins pretty much on a daily basis, especially if you're giving them a poor diet, which you should be never be doing anyway. I mean, I hardly use the vitamin drops a couple of times a week, but most people would probably give it to them every day, or need to give it to them every day, um, because they just give them seed and maybe a little bit of greens, and they think, yeah, they're, because I've given them greens. They're getting all, all the vitamins they need. They're not. They need, birds need a huge diet. The stuff that I've got here is it's just nothing compared to what I give them every day. So um, I know mine definitely get pretty much everything they need. But that's where that done. Um, another couple of things you're going to need. This is a white spray. Um, that's a, so you can spray that on the birds if you get. If you're buying new birds, you bring them into your home, and you, before you put them with your rest of your flock, um, hold the bird out, give it one spray down the front, one spray down the back, and one under each wing. So it's basically four pumps per bird, uh, and you can use this spray inside the cage if you need to, just to keep the mites at bay. 
I don't really find it a cure, but it does help. It does help um, prevent prevent them really. This is the same stuff, but this is actually a powder form. This is used again, really for nesting boxes, um, just to keep the mites up when the birds are nesting. Um, also, it's handy to, if you clean out your cage before you put all your substrates in, um, with bedding etc. Um, just puff a little bit into the corners and around the edges, or any cracks and crannies, because this really is good stuff. It does um, stop the mites from getting in and uh, lurking in those little places where they like to live. So, um, I think again I mentioned this last in the other, in the other series, in the other video. Um, very, very cheap to make. This is basically just a light, uh, light socket. So you can fit a 40 to 60 watt light bulb in there, just a house, any household light bulb. But don't use energy savers because they don't produce enough heat. And it's not the heat, sorry, it's not the light that the birds want, it is the heat. So if it gets too hot, if you dangle it by the, sorry, I'll just mention that there is on about, this is about a metre long cable roughly, but just ordinary, um, just lighting wire really it doesn't cost much and just a plug on the other end very simple to very cheap parts very simple to wire it doesn't take long at all I've got to switch one um, what I do is if I suspect a bird is ill and you can normally tell because they will they will look fluff up into a little ball their feathers are not tight to the skin they're kind of raised all over um, and they look a lot bigger than what they are chances are they're, they're probably a lot smaller underneath so what I do is I'll dangle this in the cage just above the perch or next to the perch and if the bird is, is a, if the bird is all fluffed up it, it does that because it's trying to save heat so what it will do is it will it will sort of hop closer to the um, per, uh, the light bulb to get the heat if it gets a little bit too warm gets too hot it'll move away so um, it'll find that sort of the temperature that it wants just to keep the right temperature for them so and that can prolong um, bird's life while it's um, but basically to give you time to find out what's wrong with the bird so uh, I mean it's not a cure don't look at it and think oh I must get one in that's going to cure my birds if it gets ill because it won't this is basically uh, when your bird does get ill the worst thing is that the, straight away the bird starts to lose heat so they need to keep that heat on so that they can last a bit longer which gives you more time to figure out what's wrong with your bird uh, and a couple of other things you may want to get just in case because at some point if you've got many birds you will come across one or two that does become ill um, this is polyade and this is guardian angel um, I'll go into a lot more about this later on when, um, when I do the video on medicines etc um, these are handy to have because if your bird does become ill and it's not eating very well uh, or it's going light like Going light means uh, anorexia, but the bird is actually losing weight. The bird looks big, but when you pick it up, it's, it's kind of weightless, and the and the um, the kill bone down the front actually protrudes. It sticks out. It's a bit like on the Sunday when you've had your roast chicken and you've stripped all the meat off the chicken, and you've got that the kill bone down there. That's kind of how it feels, really. So, but that one there is packed full of uh, nutrition, and you thought you can. You can hand feed this using a syringe, which I've got, which I've got, I will cover later on um, in another video. And this is this is actually um, gives the bird all the nutrition and vitamins that it needs if it is starving to death, basically, and it's not very well. This one, they use them together, by the way. And this one helps uh, bolster the, the immune system, so that while the bird is ill. Normally, you find that the immune system goes down, and it, it gets attacked by every all the, all the bacteria and uh, protozoans, protozoa, and the bird just eventually kills over and dies. But this one, this is quite good. It, it reinforces the um, the immune system, so it can fight off the, uh, the diseases. And uh, well, it gives this one a chance to work, get, put new, nutrition back into the bird, and it can save a bird's life. I've saved many, so. This is definitely something worth having in your cupboard. I say this is not. Um, it is a basic need, really. I would. That's why I wanted to put it on the video. People say, "Well, you know, I'll get a bird. I don't need. It. I'll just take it to a vet." That's great if you can afford a vet. If you can afford to um, spend all that money, 
that's not a problem. I have no problem with that at all. I mean, vets love it because this might, most of the vets that I've known, they, as soon as you walk in, they don't see your, they don't see your bird, they just see your wallet, and that's being, that's being quite honest. Um, and they're not really the lot. I don't like people like that looking at my my birds because um, I want somebody who cares my, cares for the birds and not cares for my wallet. So, they're definitely something to, um, to have in your cupboard. And I did mention this in, in the last video, and I said that I would mention it a bit more in this video. Again, it's still not quite finished yet. I'm still waiting for the part. This is a hospital cage. Um, it's about a foot and a half long, roughly, something like that. Um, it's got a glass side on the front. I'm going to put a couple of holes in there, breathing holes later. And on top, I'm waiting for a small gadget to turn up so I can bolt it on top. And then you program it so it's um, the temperature stays around 85 degrees. Uh, if the bird is ill, which is going to be seeking heat, the first thing it wants is heat. So if you get that heat, in there and you keep the bird warm all the time with a little, little shallow bowl of water and then you can put your food etc in there and the, um, it's just basically to make sure he's in a safe environment where he's warm and then nothing can get to him he can't he can't find himself in any danger in there and it gives you time to administer medicines etc now it was built like this because I was going to do it with a light bulb in this side uh, and on that side there was going to be a thermostat but now I've decided to do it another way this section here will probably be like boarded off and maybe a, a, um, a little compartment in there so I can put the food uh, medicines and, and other other parts that I need other things etc but this is a sort of this is a sort of thing that you probably would need because um, uh, if you do get a sick bird and you need to take it to a vet um, if you have anything like this, this sort of thing would be ideal because it's the right size. Um, it does need something on there so you can carry it, etc. There is another port cage, but I thought I find it's best to take sick birds to the hospital in a, in a hospital cage because um, you can keep them warm, especially if it's cold outside, uh, winter time, if it's snowing, etc. Or it's way below zero. It's really not going to do the bird any good if he starts getting cold. So um, I'm going to keep them warm. This one's going to have a battery backup, so if I do unplug it from the mains, it stays powered from the battery. So that's what I'm going to do. But you, you want something about this size anyway. I say I will. I will cover um, medicines and hospital cages, hand feeding if, if a bird is sick. I will go into that in full detail in another video. But this um, video, basically, I want to keep it quite simple for beginners mainly. Um, you're going to want to seed. Uh, a good quality seed. Don't go and buy. Oh, um, don't go to a pet shop and think, oh, that seed's cheaper than that one. You know, it's, you probably find it's cheaper for a reason. It's, it's probably been sat around for a long time. It's just not very good quality seed, and you'll probably find that the seed is, is about three or four years old. You want seed that's fresh from last year, or or um, it's it's just been it's been harvested, dried out, and it's sold straight away. That's what you want. You can always tell the quality of your seed. Um, you can tell how old it is generally as well. You get yourself a little handful and you put them in a, a soak them overnight in a little shallow um, dish of water. Um, drain them off and see how many days it takes for them to germinate. If the seed germinates pretty much next day, that seed is fresh. The quicker it germinates, the more fresher that seed is. If it takes two, three days, I always, for me, I've always found that every day it takes to germinate is how many years old the seed is. So if I've got two year old seed, it usually takes around two days to, to germinate from the day, you know, from the day that I start them off, from the day I soak them. That's how it's always worked for me. Um, others may disagree, I don't know, but that's how it's always worked for me anyway. Um, I think, uh, you probably want to get yourself some of these as well. Um, this is scaly lotion. I'll cover all this again with, it, with another one, another video. Um, and some cage tonic. These are just that one there is just basically a pick me up if he's a little bit down and he's not ill but just not feeling that you know not feeling that great. Maybe he's not singing etc. Um, scaly lotion is handy against um, mites 
a scaly leg or scaly face mites. Um, the bases are the same thing, it's just that they, they affect either the face or the feet. Sometimes they, they usually start on the feet and work upwards towards the face. So um, it's quite easy to use, quite cheap as well. It's just handy to have. Uh, there is one other thing before I finish this video. Um, is uh, the quality of water. I don't know where you. I don't know where you live. What your quality of your water is like. But I don't like to drink. So I don't like to give my birds water directly from the tap into their bowls. I, I usually use. I use one of these. It's um, there's nothing in it at the moment. So it's all being um, It's a water filter. They're quite cheap to buy. Ten pound or something. Or I don't know how much. They are where you are what size you get i got a large one because um obviously i've got quite a lot of birds and they would go through all of that in one day no problem so and it helps to purify the water it takes out a lot of the chalk it takes out all the chemicals that they use so and you just fill it up leave it overnight and in the morning you, you can use it and i mean you can you you could use it yourself as well which is basically what it's for anyway but it's up to you um it's always handy to have fresh clean fresh clean water fresh clean food everything i say i always i'll probably say it in most videos but hygiene keep everything clean use the best quality stuff you can get especially the seed because uh seed is what they're going to be living on every single day especially and water and seed are their main they're their um they're the primary the intakes of the day so they must be clean at all times um, I think that will be that. Right, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.